Minister, um, a number of weeks ago you and I participated in a television debate uh, and during the course of that debate you were asked a very straightforward question. Uh, did you believe we were experiencing a housing emergency? Uh, and I have to say, Minister, your response not only astonished myself and, and uh, the journalist interviewing you, but astonished pretty much most people watching that programme. And the reason why is because in the months leading up uh, to that television programme, house prices had reached historic highs, higher than at any other period before and continuing to rise. Rents had reached historic highs uh, and were continuing to rise. Homelessness had reached levels we never thought possible, uh, Minister. And it's interesting just to reflect for a moment what has happened since then in the intervening uh, two weeks. You published a, a quarter three report of your housing plan with no updates uh, on the delivery of social or indeed affordable rent or affordable purchase homes uh, uh, by that time. And the reason why, of course, is because uh, as of the end of the third quarter, you're behind target. Uh, we had documents released from your department actually saying that rather than the 33,000 new homes a year that we need underpinning your plan, in fact, it's a figure of at least 42,000. Uh, only last week we had the Central Statistics Office property price index showing house prices continuing to rise out of control, 10% statewide, Midlands 14% uh, in the western seaboard, 17%. We then also had, uh, within a matter of hours of that, your own department releasing the latest commencement data showing commencements are falling by 14%, a very, very significant drop. Uh, and then, probably most astonishing of all, uh, the Sunday Independent got access to a cabinet memo that showed that as of the end of the third quarter, you were behind expenditure expected by that period of almost half a billion euros. Uh, and interestingly, one of the uh, other uh, uh, things that was reported in that newspaper report uh, was that Lorcan Sir, who's done a very detailed analysis of your plan, shows even if you meet all your targets, home ownership as a percentage of the total housing stock is actually going to continue to decline over the next number of years. And then on top of it all, this morning we have the latest DAF.ie rent report. Uh, rents at the highest level of increase since the DAF.ie records began in 2006, 14% statewide. Most counties across the state uh, had uh, uh, increases in the high teens in a number 20, 22 uh, and 24%. In fact, in Dublin, uh, where you and I both represent the electorate, the cost of a new rental, of an average new rental is 28,000 euros a year. Truly astonishing. And of course, behind all these figures, there's a human cost. There's a social and an economic cost. We're talking about schools that have no teachers to teach children. We're talking about hospitals that don't have nurses to care for our family members, medical centres without young GPs. Students, in some cases, we're being told, giving up college courses because they can't find accommodation. And of course, children sleeping not only in hostels, but we're even seeing increases of children sleeping in cars and in tents. And as the Sunday Business Post reported uh, the weekend before, we're now seeing young people with good education and good job prospects actively considering emigrating. And that is why the level of public anger at the failure of your housing policies is rising and rising every single day. That is why the Raise the Roof campaign, led by the Irish Congress of Trade Unions, the entire trade union movement, civil society, homeless organisations, housing organisations and opposition parties, will be on the streets of Dublin, Parnell Square at one o'clock, to tell you very, very clearly your housing policies are failing and we need to see a change. And what's really important about that Raise the Roof demonstration is it's not just a demonstration of anger and frustration at your and your colleagues' failure. It is also a march of hope because one of the things that Raise the Roof is trying to do, and I think you'll hear uh, from all of the opposition uh, uh, here today, is to say that there is an alternative. The Taoiseach Michal Martin again stood in front of us during leaders' questions and claimed there is no alternative to your plan. Well, I have to say, uh, as somebody who's been in this House for six years, there are many, many alternatives which are failing uh, to ignore, and we're giving you some tonight. The first is declare an emergency. Yes, this is a symbolic act. Yes, it's a statement of intent. But if you declare an emergency, and if this House declares emergency, then as night follows day, emergency actions must follow. And what kind of emergency actions? 
given where rents are at, particularly for rents not covered by rent pressure zones, we have to ban rent increases for an emergency period. There's no other way to protect renters. We also have to give renters a real refundable tax credit, one that puts up to a month's rent back in their pockets, not the ill-conceived and ill-designed relief that you have belatedly uh, 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 proposed. We also have to introduce uh, an end to no-fault evictions, where if somebody is abiding by their contract, uh, they uh, can remain there. We need to see a doubling of housing first, 240 a year is not enough, we need at least 500. We need to dramatically increase the tenants in situ scheme. Many local authorities, including mine, still aren't buying properties because you haven't given them adequate instruction and guidance. We need to ensure that properties like Tahani House, where there are both social renters and potential cost renters at risk of a mass eviction, is purchased, subject to the structural integrity of the property and the price. And crucially, we have to increase and accelerate the supply of social and affordable homes. Your targets are too low, you're not meeting them, and you need to be more ambitious. And year after year, we publish detailed, alternative, fully costed budgets, setting out what that looks like, how you would deliver 20,000 social and affordable homes every single year, uh, 4,000 affordable rental, 4,000 affordable purchase. Much more serious action uh, on vacancy. There is no reason why we couldn't be taking at least 4,000 vacants and derelicts a year if you designed the schemes properly uh, uh, and introduced them. And crucially, uh, we need to use high-grade, long-term, good quality modular building technology. At least 1,000 new permanent homes a year uh, could be done. And of course, all of this could be done if you would grapple the red tape and the bureaucracy of your own department and the Department of Public Expenditure Reform, gave the local authorities the funding in advance, took off the shackles and let them build the capacity at a more accelerated rate than you have done to date. Now, Kiancorla, or last Kiancorla, apologies. The Minister will often tell us that none of this can be done. What he actually means is he doesn't have the political will to do it, because it can be done and it must be done. He says, and the opening line of, I think, what must be the longest counter motion in the history of the Oireachtas, five pages, almost 2,000 words saying virtually nothing. The opening sentence is, he says, his plan is working. What he means is he's going to carry on regardless, irrespective of the cost to workers, to families and to children. And I've said on a number of occasions, it is clear the Minister isn't going to listen to the opposition. He said when he took office that he would listen to constructive ideas, that he would engage. Uh, in fact, it's very, very difficult to even get him into the Housing Committee to give updates and reports, at, unlike his two predecessors. But it's clear you're not listening to us. Well, let me say this, and let me say to all of those people who will hear this debate and the message from a united opposition, trade union movement and NGO sector today, if you won't listen to us, then you will have to listen to the voice of the people. And this Saturday in Dublin, uh, and at future Saturdays into next year, in their thousands, people, Sinn Féin voters, opposition voters, government voters, non-voters, are going to tell you loud and clear, your plan is not working, your plan is failing, your plan is making people's lives worse. And you have a very, very simple choice, Minister. Join with us, declare an emergency, and finally accept that you have to change your housing policy. Or if you don't, the people will change the government. It has happened before, it will happen again. And I would urge everybody, irrespective of your political views, if you are directly affected by the housing crisis, if your friends or your family or community are affected by this crisis, be on the streets of Dublin uh, on Saturday, one o'clock at the Garden Remembrance, behind the Raise the Roof banner, to demand a change of housing policy. Two and a half years, Minister, you're out of time. We urgently need change. Thank you, Lasky and Corla.